So I'm here at the British Shooting Show 2022. I'm just going to have a little walk around and show you the things that look pretty interesting. Are you still waiting to try? Yeah. Oh, I love it. I love it. Um, all right. So we're here at the British Shooting Show 2022, and uh, I'm here with Chris at CDR Guns. And we've got something that's caught my eye, and um, Chris is just going to tell you what he's just told me. Fair enough. So this is an AMX Catran C. As you can see, we've got a lovely folding stock. Pretty easy to see it that way. Fully adjustable cheek piece, adjustable for length of pull, and adjustable on the butt pad for height. We've got an anti-double load system and the 18-shot 177 mags. Fully regulated CZ barrel. Lovely light tactical bit of kit. Um, it's okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you guys remember um, when I used to shoot the S200, how accurate that was. This has got the same barrel as that with a lot of other bits and pieces. You get so many a few more toys. Shots. Oh, all the toys. You've got the folding stock, fully regulated. Um, 177, which is obviously what I shoot most on my channel. Uh, 80 plus shots. Yeah, 80 shots from factory tune, but we're looking at to improve that. Yeah. Cocking handle is swappable from left to right, as is the safety, so fully ambidextrous design. So, Lovely. You and presumably you, you can get all the attachments onto. Yep, so you've got a standard key mod there. It goes all the way back to there. Yep. And when I supply them, I, prefer, I put the key mods Picatinny adapter in. Okay. So you can put a bipod straight on. Yep. So you can then put more on the sides if you want. Yep. And it's just completely standard fitment, so nice and easy to get hold of. Perfect. It's a lovely gun. Tell us about the background of it, how you got into it. Um, well, I was aware of the company when it founded. These are designed by a chap called Maxim, okay. who is responsible for the AGT Vulcan 2 and the AGT Uragan. Okay. And also, if you notice the bullpups there, look at striking you like an Ataman BP-17. Yep, yep. That's also his handiwork. He is actually a director, which is how the company got the name. Okay. Because his name is Maxim, M-A-K-S-I-M. Yeah, yeah. So hence the air, Max. Yeah. And he designs beautiful guns. And I was aware of them from a previous career. And I just sort of got into it from there. Lovely. Well, yeah. It's, uh, it's great. I'm, I'm going to see if I can uh, grab one off of Chris at some point for a little test. Oh, on definitely needs to happen. Yeah, for sure. Well, thanks very much for your time. Thank you. Cheers, Chris. Well, this guy will need no introduction. Matt Dover, Air Arms, Hunting South Africa, Element Optics. Yeah. Effects. Uh, probably one of the biggest names on YouTube now. Well, uh, let me firstly say that it's a pleasure to finally meet you. We've been and chatting you. for kind of years on and off. Um, I was last in the UK in 2015 and it, we never got a chance to meet up. I've been wanting to come to a British shooting show for years and finally got back, so it's great to be here. I didn't know I didn't know he was coming, I sort of <laughs> probably tried to get him out to one of the farms. Yeah. Matt, we're here at the stand and we've got one of these new element scopes you've been yeah. heavily involved with. Just tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, Element Optics is a, a relatively new venture for me and that I've, my focus for the for many years as you know has been has been kind of YouTube and I've been uh, uh, hunting uh, working with brands like originally um, um, Air Arms and then uh, done a lot with FX over the last few years and and just enjoyed being able to travel around hunt in different countries go to trade shows and everything um, but I've always been very interested in, in product development and and trying to like work on something and bring it to the market and the opportunity came up a few years ago to you know I've done a bit of on and off work with with optics companies in the past and and uh, worked on designing reticles and things for a few different optics companies but when the opportunity came up to kind of start something from scratch and got a really good investment and and basically like uh, being able to rope in Shane Keller and and uh, guys like that um, Ted Beer and, and design something that uh, that's that's new we jumped on that and element optics was born probably I think we started three or four years ago and then launched early 2020 which is probably the worst time to launch a, a yeah. company ever <laughs> um, but yeah brought a few um, models uh, we had the helix which is sort of the more entry-level model Titan which is sort of mid-range and the Nexus which is really top end and recently brought something like this is the 4 to 16 Helix which is a new magnification range. So the Helix um, would be something ideal to go on like the sub 12 foot pound. Exactly uh, and and the Helix is um, I think it's really well suited you know especially if you're looking at air gun scopes because an air gun scope 
firstly, you, you've got that loopy trajectory that you have to account for. So whether you're using a reticle or dialing, you've got to account for that. And so at the end of the day, it's the equivalent of shooting out to 500 plus meters with a, with a firearm. Yeah. And you can't just have a super, super simple scope that doesn't track well and doesn't have any reticle markings. You kind of have to think about things that you wouldn't have to think about shooting a deer at 150 yards with a firearm. And for those so, who don't know, tracking is uh, how, how, uh, how well the reticle moves. Like yes. For one, one click is always the same, one click is always one sure. click. Exactly. So yeah, there's, there's a number of ways you can account for, for pellet drop or bullet drop. One is to, to use the reticle itself and you know, count your, your hold over markings, whether it's uh, like milliradians or MOA or you know using those units to, to estimate where your pellet's going to end up and the other way is, is to actually dial for it and a lot of people will just use their turrets to zero their rifle scope but we've seen the, the, the industry change a lot in the last few years where more and more people are wanting to dial so that they don't have to count in their head how many holdover marks they're using so our whole philosophy is built on the fact that a precision rifle scope um, if it's not precise, then it's not a precision rifle scope. So even on a sort of budget line like the Helix, um, everything inside has to track perfectly and work perfectly and hold zero and return to zero perfectly. Otherwise, it's, otherwise there's no point in, in, in marketing it as a precision rifle scope. So that's kind of the whole philosophy around this. Um, and it's not necessarily an air gun scope. It's, it's designed first and foremost for firearms, but we've obviously made it that it parallaxes down to 15 yards, so it can be used for anything, basically. Yeah. Yeah. yeah perfect. Yeah. I mean, that's that's pretty much the same as most scopes, and if you want to yeah. see closer, just wind the mag down and make do, isn't it, really? Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, this particular model is first focal plane. We only do one second focal plane scope, so the difference is second focal plane your reticle, no matter what you do to your magnification, the reticle appears to be the same, which a lot of people prefer, especially for, for hunting and stuff, because your reticle thickness doesn't change. Whereas a first focal plane scope, the reticle changes thickness with the, as you change the magnification, and that can kind of affect the thickness as well. Um, but we do offer both, and we feel it's important to offer both, because there are really so many different shooting applications and so many different demands. One thing we've learned is like, you're never gonna make everyone happy. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. perfect. Well, thanks very much, man. Cool, so, pleasure. It's been great chatting to you. You too, and keep well. Hopefully we can put a few pallets into some something in the future. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, I, I, do, I, do, uh, I do intend to come back here more regularly. I've got a five year UK visa, oh, nice. which means I can come whenever I want now. Yeah. So maybe next year uh, we'll plan something. Lovely. It'll be quite fun. Lovely, I mean, yeah, yeah that'd be brilliant. Cool. Cheers, Matt. Great. See you in a minute. Keep well. <laughs> with Mark on the Hawk stand. Um, thanks for having me, Mark. Um, and we've got the Frontiers, the new ones, never, never before seen. You right to go through them with us? Yeah, I'll do my best. Thank so you. new for 2022, it's the new 34 mil Frontiers, um, all, all first focal plane. Um, so what we've got is professional flip-ups. These come with a sunshade already in the box so you don't have to buy those as an extra optional extra yep. um, you can get a, a throw lever which you don't have to use you can have it flush if you want to but it's great if you wear gloves in the winter yeah things like that uh, it's also great at night isn't it if you're using night vision because it i find when it's vertical i know what magnification it's on that's absolutely it's a, it's a good you know it, it is a good identification of where you are um, 34 mil tube now with these is on the 30 millimeter it allows us 90 MOAs from top to bottom, so your, your, your adjustment levels are huge. Oh, right, yeah. You know, so d depending on what calibre you're on, you shouldn't really have any problems with these at all. We do offer 120 mil MOAs in the, the 18 magnification, which is even more. That's a big boy. And what sort of what sort of applications would these be on? Would you would you put it on, a, on an air rifle or a, a 243 or? Uh, 243, yeah, air rifle, you could put it on, but realistically, this is more for your long range, you know, yeah. set, uh, center fire yeah. users, your target users, bench rest, all yeah. that type of thing. This is where it really is. Yeah, let's have a little look. Yeah, for me, I definitely have the. Uh 
I definitely have that guy on there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it makes it so much easier. Yeah. It's, um, that, that tube looks an incredible amount of lighting. It is, it is, it really is. At low light conditions, not a problem with a 34mm at all. Yeah. Um, we're using um, the H7 lenses in this as well. So optically, they're absolutely crystal clear. Brilliant. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. What a lovely bit of kit. Cheers, Mark. You're welcome. The, the newish Hawk Sidewinder. It's been out about a year, but obviously I haven't seen it because we haven't had any shows. This is a 4.5 to 14 magnification, 30 mil tube. You've got target turrets, so you can pull it up and dial, um, dial your shots in. It's got a side wheel, obviously as all sidewinders have, and also an illuminated reticle. Um, it's a 40 mil objective lens, which for me is ideal because I like to have the scope as close to the barrel as possible, especially when hunting. And that also means that I can just pick up my H HW100 and take it to a HFT comp as well and not have, not have to change anything. Um, I think this is probably the perfect scope for me. Um, you've also got a knob here that adds a lot of ease when you're changing the mag and also at different positions you know what magnification you're in so when it's directly up here it's an 8 mag which is perfect for when you're night vision shooting and you can't see what magnification you're on. Um, you need to know what magnification you're on because it's still a second focal plane scope so you need to know your aim points on your reticle. So yeah I'm going to see if I can get hold of one of these and hopefully use it to good effect on the squirrels and the pigeons when the evenings get a bit lighter. Here on the Air Arms stand with Sheila, we've got the brand new uh, Air Arms S510 Tactical and Sheila's just going to tell us a little bit about it. Okay, hi. Um, this is our new S510 Tactical Rifle. Uh, standard power, carbine length cylinder, um, available in 177 and 22 calibre. And what you see here is what you get with the hand stop, with the angled grip. All these parts are Magpul, so we're in um, association with the Magpul, which is an American brand and a very good quality brand to go with our products. Um, the silencer is specific for this particular rifle. The end cap has been designed specifically for this rifle. We obviously manufacture all these parts and you've also got all the uh, Picatinny rails as well that are available as spare parts. Um, side lever cocking mechanism uses the same magazines as we use on our standard S510, S410. So They're all readily available. The price of the rifle includes two magazines and the moderator as well and as you see here. Um, we also do an FAC version, which is slightly longer, that's behind us on the wall. It's got the adjustable power, two magazines again, and obviously we do that in a 177, 22 and 25 calibre as well. Okay, lovely. So yeah, and we've got lots of accessories available, so you've got all the Magpul parts in different colours, it's available standard in the black, yep. but we've got the olive green, we've got the flat earth, um, sand colour yeah, and the also the grey. Yeah, we've got a couple on the wall in the orange. It looks pretty cool, doesn't yeah. it? And, so. and you can change the grips as well, can't yeah, you? Yeah, we've got angled grips, well, I'll, I'll vertical the, grips. I'll, I'll so the camera over and show them the, the laminate one yeah. on the wall. Yeah, that would be yeah. great. And the stock's adjustable? The stock's adjustable, yes. You just pull the lever and it comes back out and it locks into position. Nice. So, for, um, well, perfect for kids because it's always... Mm -hmm. It's always tricky trying to get a stock that's short enough for exactly. Yes, yeah, so it's quite lightweight, military looking, so yeah. just something different that we've introduced. So yeah. Have a hold. Yeah, of course. They're fully regulated as well, so yeah. we're not doing unregulated versions of these. It does feel surprisingly comfortable, like. It's Look, quite lightweight as well, isn't it? Yeah, uh, looking at it, it, it doesn't, I don't know, it doesn't look like it'll feel that nice, but when it's shoulder, <laughs> it's very comfortable. to adjust the stock to, to what you want. But. Yeah.
That's very good. Thank you very much, Sheila. That's okay, you're welcome. See you again. Nice to see you. Then so I'm with Alex now on uh, bio ammo and these shotgun cartridges are the only ones that are fully biodegradable which when you're walking through the woods it's not something you want to see is cartridges lying around we all try and pick them up but at the end of the day if you're using a semi-auto a lot of the time you can't find the cartridges yeah so, yeah tell us a bit more um what it is is bio ammo sort of came to the came to the uk about two years ago and we're the sole importers of them their whole ethos was to be a green future-proof cartridge sustainable and just make sure there's nothing which sort of the general public can sort of put a negative spin on, on the way that shooting is. So they, they're manufacturing their own cases and their own wads made from a maize-based resin. It's 100% biodegradable. It takes around 18 months to degrade in a compost bin. It will take a little bit longer if it's just left out in the open. Uh, we are focusing mostly on the game cartridges, which are available in steel and blue the alternative shot which is a mixture of aluminium bismuth tin and zinc we have currently 12 balls on the market in a 70 millimeter case we have shorter 65 mil cases coming later on this year and 20 bores will be starting uh, to go into production imminently okay brilliant and um is that the that is one of the wards yeah and that's also vegetable uh, that is yes resin yep Okay. And that is one of the cases. It does feel like a. It feels case. like a sort of what plastic is and yeah. does, but it, it is not. <laughs> no. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Alex. No, that's all right. Cracking. Thank you. That's all right. We're here with Jamie at AIMCAM again. We've um, we've met Jamie before um, with previous models of the of the yep. camera, and uh, there's a new one out. It's been a few years since we've since we've seen AIMCAM. Um, we've been busy. Tell us about it. Well. There's a little thing happened called lockdown and COVID. So what did we do? We just got busy thinking, well, everyone's going to come back and want a bigger and better camera. So we produced the Pro 3K. We made from what was the 1080p AIMCAM Pro 2i, we made the Pro 3K, the world's first most powerful 4K line of sight camera system. So now this is two to three times the, the power, the resolution of the 2i. We still do the 2i because it's an, a fantastic product at the right price range. And the Pro 3K was crit critical that we kept all the accessories, the lenses, and everything that the Pro 2i had can be upgraded straight into the 3K. So you can upgrade from a 2i to a 3K and everything's the same, keeps it going. The thing is, camera technology is moving on all the time. We had people on ranges in America saying they need a low light resolution. Wild fowlers wanting to go shooting nearly in dusk and dawn. So the only way we could do it was go out there shopping, find a better camera, new electronics, new app. Just did it all during lockdown. And now we're back. Our first show in the UK with the 3K. Happy days. You know, it's just the job. Yeah, so that's the key thing. I'll, um, yeah. I'll put a link in the, in, the, in the description to the video I did of my aim cam. Um, pro shooting with Tom, and um, and yeah, have a look at and it. And now we that need to get awesome. you shooting with this, don't you? <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll Some see serious like. footage, see what it's like. Yeah, we look yeah. forward to it. It's really exciting. Um, that's it. We've had great feedback about it. So yeah, happy days. Get yourself on aimcam.com and uh, yeah, thanks for joining us. Great. Cheers, Jamie. Cheers, mate. We're here on the Nightville stand. Hey, Andy. Good to see you, young man. And you. And All you. these years. <laughs> 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 God, here we are. Aren't we? I'll put that video of the. Of the duck calling in. Yeah, yeah, because uh, so we can, we can I have mean, a little recap. That was quite a few years ago at Stoneley. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, more of that. You were a much, a much younger lad then. But <laughs> <laughs> you still know better at duck calling now. Oh, I don't know, I've got the calls with me if you want. We can give it a go, but you know, <laughs> I'd rather bring cup punters to the stand than scare well, them away. Yeah, you're not going you're not, you're not to get any more from me, duck calling, that's for sure. Yeah. Well, here we are on the Night Pro stand. Uh, Czech company, I'm doing quite a lot of work with them. 
Uh, so uh, yeah, so uh, what would you like to know about this gear then? Um, just tell, tell us about it. Like, why? What would what would make me want to buy it? No, well, um, the the Night Pearl Thermal. I mean, is some of the best I've ever used. Yeah. Um, strong, reliable. You know, it's good clarity. I mean, as that chap was saying just now, it's a game changer. You know, I first bought one of the Night Pearls back in 2018 uh, when I was with Night Sight. And um, I bought one of those and haven't looked back. And it's still one of my favourite units now, although it's the lowest range model now, really. Yeah. But this uh, this one here is the uh, Scops 50 Max 3. And, uh, well, you saw for yourself, I mean, it's, yeah. it's awesome. I mean, I've been using this for all sorts of things on my pest control range professionally. I mean, you asked about squirrel drays and squirrels. It's thermal, isn't it? So it shines up the... It, it brings up the heat, you know. I mean, like I said, I changed it to an orange one and everybody looked like they were tango just now. <laughs> it's like great, but... It was like walking down Essex High Street. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I mean, you know, like I say, squirrel, squirrel drays, they just light up the glow when there's a when there's a squirrel, so it saves going around poking the ones that aren't. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so uh, you know, but brilliant bit of kit. The Scops Max Three this is the top of the range. Uh, there's, there's a budget to shoot suit everybody with this. Yeah. When I say this one is top of the range, um, I put this, I bought this and the other and the uh, Sierra 50, um, which is a front add-on scope. Um, I bought both of these on my business because they're a game changer for the business, and uh, <laughs> they paid for themselves within two months. Yeah. I get, I've got work coming in just out my this ears at the moment. Control business. Pest control business. I mean, these guys want me to go to Iwa in Germany with them. I can't go. I'm fully booked. I've got no room left, and I'm like, I'm sorry, guys, I can't come. Yeah. It'd yeah. be nice, but you know, can't be everywhere. No, no. And the price of this one, which is the well, this is the top of the range one. So this is the Max Three, um, the 50 mil lens. Uh, so this one's 2,595 or 695 off the top of my head without looking at the uh, price list which is over there at a shop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, and, yeah. The, and the cheaper one? The so cheapest one that I really love, which is the one I bought originally, is 650 quid. It cost me a thousand pound four years ago when I bought it, yeah. out of my own pocket. And you know, so there we go, so top of the range. And, and that, um, and the difference between them is just clarity and... S size of lens, I mean that's only a 15mm um, lens or a 25mm lens on that, on that one. There's like it's half the size. Yeah. Um, I, think, I think that's a 20mm lens on that one. And what, what would that mean in the field then? What difference would that... Um, length, uh, you know, how far you see, field of vision, slightness of clarity of tube. I mean it's perfectly fine you, like that as you sign. Whereas this one you can zoom in that little bit because you... With thermal, you don't can't zoom in too far. It's like on your phone. If you zoom in too far, it pixelates. Yeah. So, but an experienced hunter like me or yourself, you can look at you can look through that and go, yeah, that's a 200 yards. That's a hare. That's a rabbit. That's a fox. Just by the way it moves. Yeah. Whereas this one, top of the range, you can zoom right in and see its whiskers twitch, and you can tell whether it's a male or a female. <laughs> Brilliant. You know? So, if you if you sort of Foxing and, and doing things with bigger guns at longer ranges, then probably spend a little bit more. But if you're just air rifle shooting like me, yeah, I mean, to be honest, I've shot as many foxes with that low range model. Yeah. It was like, you know, they are heat source, that's a fox up on the sticks, fox, bang, poof, okay. you know. So the difference is, is that will give you a heat source experience, tells me what I'm shooting at, whereas this is as clear as looking at this video on camera. Obviously, I spoke about the uh, Scops Max 3, and that's basically the same unit into a Sierra 50. This is a front add on scope. Now, this is quite unique in many ways because literally, pop straight off your scope. As long as you've got a scope the same size unit, you can just pop straight back on. You know, and you can chuck that right up to a 50, 50 BMG. Right? Nice. So, but if you haven't got the same size scope, what you do is you have a couple of these, they just what a 10 second change from rifle to rifle turns into a 30 second change because you got to unscrew one, screw the other back on, clip, done. Yeah. Simple as that. It fits on every, every rifle. And uh, uh, you see there's got a range finder in there. Yep, a yeah. built in range. I'd say it was more like a range estimator than a finder. Okay. I'd say 203 yard fox the other night. But like I say, when I shot that 203 yard fox the other night, I pulled out my manual range finder, a range found it, and that was 203 yards. Yeah. So it's pretty much bang on. Yeah. And they just don't call it a range finder because that then covering themselves. covers themselves, you know what <laughs> I mean? So, but it's a cracking unit. Um, 
But what I love about these is it's unique in so many ways. One, you're using your own crosshairs. So your scope zeroed, you know how to use your scope, you can yeah. shoot, yeah. you know. It's also got three types of power source. Um, you've got a manual one that goes on the top, which is the one I showed you in the book, where it goes on and then you can rechargeable. You've also got this little unit on the side here, where you can pull that out, lift it up, and then you've got the two rechargeable batteries in a click it in, job done. Okay. Or if you don't want to use any of that, shot bolt batteries, hang them in, put that little clip in, shut the door and away you go. So there's three different power sources. So you can always have spares with you. So if one dies, you've got something else. You, when I always carry a couple of shot bolt ones, brand new in the packet. Yeah. So if ever something goes wrong, I've got the backup. Yeah. In fact, I've got two backups, so I have that one and that one. Yeah. <laughs> Night Pro, the old edge creeper. Brilliant. That's a winning combination in the field or on the range. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> Cheers, Rob. It's good to see you. Always a good to see you, Andy. Again. It's good to see you, young man. It's wonderful that you've been doing so well. If it isn't since those young days of down there. <laughs> in the squeaky voice. With no hair on the face. No, no. Still got a way to get to you. I guess I like yours, but. Oh, well, you know, this comes with age and looking like a dead badger. <laughs>